Hello everyone, I'm Rodney from 3GameMan.com and today's Q&A video is really a rehash of a video review that I recently did on the QNAP TAS 268 NAS. In this video though, I will be just showing you how to set it up. So installing the drives, setting up the software both, QTS and Android coverage. So I hope you enjoy this video. If you do like it, remember to subscribe, share. Your comments are always welcome. And if you have a question for me, please post it and I'll get to it as soon as I can. Installing drives is a snap. First, remove the screw that's on the bottom of the unit, then slide the cover off, insert the drives. Make sure you push them all the way in. Then use these drive rails to secure the drives. And by the way, each one is labeled and you insert it on the outside like so. Now put the cover back on and secure it with the screw. Now there's a few ways to set this NAS up. And if you recall, there was a sticker on the NAS for quick setup. You can go ahead and pretty much in any browser in the address bar, type in start.qnap.com and then enter the cloud key. Or you can go ahead and scan the QR code that you'll find on that sticker with your iPhone, iPad, or Android device. Now you can alternatively download Q Finder, that is their utility for setup. It will find the device. Once you've found it, double click on it. It will open your default browser and from there go through the installation wizard. Okay, so let's have a quick look here at the QTS operating system. At the top left, you've got some shortcuts here for the application and system. This is just the name of the NAS. At the top right, you can go to My Cloud if you've set that up. Background tasks, external drives, if you have any, notifications. These are the options for your profile, wallpaper, change your password, and other miscellaneous options. Here we've got change password, restart, shut down, log out, and about. You can quickly search for something if you want to. Just help, change the language, and you can change the way that everything is displayed here on the desktop and on the desktop you can see that they have a few different shortcuts but you can add as many as you want at the bottom left is the time and date and at the bottom right you'll notice that there's a little bit of a resource monitor here showing you exactly what's going on with the system statuses on you know hard drive health and whatnot Oh, and at the bottom, they have these shortcuts to all of the mobile apps. As you can see, QFile, QManager, QMusic, QPhoto, QVideo, QNotes, QGet, VMobile, and QRemote. As well as a shortcut to the QNAP utilities, and you can give them feedback if you wish. Now, the QTS operating system really has a lot to offer, and I'm briefly going to be touching on each component of it. Remember, I will be flying through this, so if you want to find out more information on it, you can visit their website, or you can just pause the video. So within the system settings, there are general settings within here. You've got system administration, time, daylight savings time, code, page, password strength, and login screen. Within the storage manager, you've got an overview of what's going on. You can see more information here about the disks and the volumes. Within network, you've got TCP IP proxy, DDNS service, you've got different security options, hardware, you can set up the buzzer, a smart fan here. Within power, you've got power recovery and a power schedule that you can set up. There are different notifications. Of course, remember to update the firmware and as well, be sure that this is checked, automatically check you know, for a new version, that's important. Here are the backup and restore options. You can attach, of course, external storage to this, a USB printer, or a UPS, an uninterrupted power supply. System status, you've got system information, network status, system service, hardware information, and a resource monitor. You can see the CPU usage, memory usage, disk usage, bandwidth usage, and system logs. Within privacy settings, 
you've got the users. You can set up user groups. Here are the shared folders. Of course, you've got advanced permissions. And as well, you can set up quotas. Here are the network services. Win, Mac, and NFS. Set up an FTP, Telnet, SSH, SNMP, Service Discovery. Here's the Recycle Bin and QSync. Of course, you can download this app for you know your device and sync everything within applications. The station manager for the photo station, music station, file station, download station, backup sta server here, all kinds of different options for that. iTunes server, DLNA media server, got the multimedia area here, media library, media folder, web server. SQL server, system log server, antivirus. I would recommend enabling this and go, go ahead and just check for updates. Select that as well. TFTP server and the Android station. Add a keyboard and mouse to this and connect it into a display and bam, you've got a mini computer system and even better yet, an Android box. Make all those connections, turn the unit on, log into the Android operating system, add your Google account and then of course download your favorite apps. Now if you're thinking about listening to music, watching movies and TV shows, Kodi is awesome. I prefer Plex personally, sometimes I use both of them, but in any case you have that flexibility. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And again, if you like this video, thumb it up, subscribe, share. Your comments are always welcome. And if you have a question for me, post it and I'll get to it as soon as I can.